Hey, welcome to Mono Network, and today we're going to talk about history of Kawasaki motorcycles. Kawasaki is the last major motorcycle manufacturer to come out of Japan along with Honda, Yamaha, and Suzuki. Just as three other companies, Kawasaki earned the reputation and extensive fan base around the globe. Among many models produced by Kawasaki, the most popular are ZXXR with legendary 636 engine, ZX10R, Z1000, Hayabusa's rival ZX14, and KLX series dirt bike, and ahead of its time, supercharged Kawasaki H2 and H2R. So let's get down to it. Kawasaki Company was founded by Shozo Kawasaki in 1896, and the firm would come to be known as Kawasaki Heavy Industries. Over time, the company's principal areas of activity would be shipbuilding, railroad rolling stock, and electrical generating plants. Motorcycles would become a small part of this diversified industrial conglomerate. But it wasn't until 1960 when strong and already popular Kawasaki company decided to sign an agreement to take over Meguru Motorcycles, a major player in the nascent Japanese motorcycle manufacturing business. Meguru is one of the only Japanese companies making 500cc bikes. In the United Kingdom, Meguru's 500 is derided as a cheap copy, but in fact, it is a pretty high quality bike. In 1961, Kawasaki produced its very first motorcycle, the 125cc two-stroke B8. The Kawasaki B8 is said to have been popular in Japan because of durability and low cost. The 125cc two-stroke piston inlet valve engine produced 11 horsepower at 8,000 RPMs and was designed based on engineering knowledge from Kawasaki aircraft. The tank emblems read Kawasaki aircraft. In 1966, the 650W1 is released and is the biggest bike made in Japan at the time. It is inspired by the BSA A10. Over the next few years, it will get twin carbs and high pipes for scrambler version. In 1969, Dave Simmons gives Kawasaki's first world championship in the 125cc class. The striking Kawasaki H1, aka Mac 3, a 500cc three-cylinder two-stroke is released. Although its handling leaves something to be desired, the motor is very powerful for the day. It's one of the quickest production bikes in the quarter mile. The Mac 3 establishes Kawasaki's reputation in the United States. In particular, it establishes a reputation for powerful and somewhat antisocial motorcycles. A wonderful H1R production racer is also released. Over the next few years, larger and smaller versions of H1, including the S1, S2, and H2, will be released. They are successful in the marketplace, and the H2R 750cc production racer is also successful on the racetrack. But Kawasaki knows that the days of the two-stroke street bikes are coming to an end. The company plans to release a four-stroke, but it's shocked by the arrival of the Honda 754. Kawasaki goes back to the drawing board. In 1973, the first new four-stroke since the W1 is released, the Kawasaki Z1 is a four-cylinder air-cooled carburetted chain-drive two-passenger motorcycle introduced in 1972 by Kawasaki. Following Honda's 1969 CB750, the Z1 helped popularize the inline cross-frame four-cylinder format that became well-known as a universal Japanese motorcycle. In 1978, Korg Ballington wins the 250cc and 350cc World Championships with four and aft parallel twin racers. In 1980, he will finish second in the Premier 500cc class. Anton Mang takes over racing duties in the 250 and 350cc classes and he will win four more titles over the next three years. This is the most successful period for Kawasaki in the World Championship. The same year, Kawasaki's big board KZ1300 is released. Honda and Benelli have already released six-cylinder bikes by this time, but Kawasaki's specification includes water cooling and shaft drive. To underline the efficiency of the cooling system, its launch is held in the Death Valley. Despite its substantial weight, journalists are impressed. In 1981, Eddie Lawson wins the AMA Superbike Championship for Kawasaki after an epic battle with Honda's Freddy Spencer. He will repeat as champion the following year. Kawasaki releases the JPZ 550. It's air-cooled and has only two valves per cylinder, but its performance threatens the 750cc machines of rival manufacturers. This is the bike that launches the 600cc class. In 1983, Kawasaki JPZ 900R is introduced. After six year long secret development, it became the world's first 16 valve liquid cooled inline four cylinder motorcycle engine 
that could push this bike to over 150 miles an hour, making it the first stock motorcycle to reach that kind of speed. The bike was so successful that only three months after being released to the press in December of 1983, dealers entered three works JPZ900R bikes and the Isle of Man production TT, finishing in first and second places. The same year, Kawasaki introduced Ninja 250R motorcycle, which came to be known as the first choice for the beginner's motorcycle riders. Since 2008, the bike is marketed as Ninja 250R in all markets. It is also referred to it by its platform designation, EX250, to which a generational suffix is attached. In the United States' previous models were already being marketed as members of the Ninja family of sport bikes. While outside of the United States, the bike was already known variously as the ZZR250, ZX250, or as the JPX250R. In 1984, Vulcan series motorcycle was introduced. The Vulcan name has been used by Kawasaki for their cruiser motorcycles, using only V-twin engines ranging from 125 to 2053 cc's. The motorcycle has been constantly updated since then. In 1987, KLR650 Dual Sport model is introduced. It has been a long-standing model in Kawasaki's lineup, remaining almost unchanged throughout the 2007 model. The 2008 model was the first significant redesign of the KLR 650 since its inception. It has a 650cc 4-stroke dual overhead cam, dual counterbalance, single-cylinder, water-cooled engine. It's earned its reputation for the low price, availability of parts, and simple reliability. In 2008, the KLR 650 was radically redesigned with the new aesthetics, modern dual headlight, and a more powerful engine. In 1990, the ZX11 is launched and features 1052cc engine. It is the first production motorcycle with ram air induction and the fastest production bike on the market. With a record top speed of 167 to 175 miles an hour, the ZX11 was the fastest production motorcycle for six consecutive years. From its introduction in 1990 through 1995, when it was unfortunately surpassed by the 1996 Honda CBR 1100XX. In 2000, the Kawasaki Ninja ZX12R was introduced. The ZX12 was designed to be more of a pure sport bike. It was much anticipated since the Suzuki GSXR 1300R Hayabusa held the title for the fastest production bike when it was introduced in 1999. The Kawasaki Ninja ZX6R was introduced in 1995 and has been constantly updated throughout the years in response to new products from Honda, Suzuki, and Yamaha. The very first ZX6R could accelerate from 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds. In 2003, facing the competition from Honda, Yamaha, and Suzuki, Kawasaki decided to take an unprecedented move in their development. They increased the capacity of the traditional 600cc engine to 636 cubic centimeters, which resulted in increased middle range power. The ZX6RR won the Super Sport category award for the Master Bike 2004 and placed third overall. In 2004, Kawasaki introduced their ZX10R which immediately won Best Superbike from Cycle World magazine and the International Master Bike Competition. It combines an ultra-narrow chassis, low weight and radial brakes. According to data published in 2007 by the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety in the United States, the ZX-10R has the country's highest collision damage loss claim rate of any motorcycle registered between 2000 and 2006. In 2007, Kawasaki 1400 GTR, also known as the Conqueror 14 or ZG1400 in some markets, was introduced in September 2007 and was based on the ZX14 platform. The engine is a transverse mountain 16 valve inline 4 with a displacement of 1300cc. It has variable valve timing derived from Mitsubishi Motors car engine. The bike's rear suspension drive system is also known as Tetra lever and is similar to the BMW Para lever. It is designed to handle the conflict drive and suspension forces known as shaft effect, typical when shaft driven motorcycles carry powerful engines. In 2008, Kawasaki gave the Ninja 250R its most extensive redesign in 20 years. The engine compression and maximum torque have been lowered to provide better mid-range performance. The redesign of the engine resulted in the improvements in the engine response at low engine speeds, making the bike smoother and much easier to ride for the new riders. In 2012, in order to get ahead of their competition, Kawasaki introduced the brand new Ninja 300, which was straight twin liquid-cooled engine producing 34 horsepower to the wheel. In some countries, it replaced the Ninja 250R completely. In others, it was sold alongside. Few key features were the slipper clutch as a standard as well as the ABS as an optional upgrade. 
In 2015, Kawasaki introduced H2 and H2R, featuring a variable speed centrifugal type supercharger. With over 320 horsepower, the H2R track only variant has 50% more power than fastest street legal motorcycles. However, the comparable street legal H2 has a much lower power output of 200 horsepower. The starting price point of $40,000 and high maintenance costs unfortunately negatively affected the sales of H2 and H2R. Its namesake is the 750cc Kawasaki H2 Mac 4, an inline triple that was introduced by Kawasaki in the early 1970s to disrupt what it saw as the sleeping motorcycle market. In 2016, as the response to the new Yamaha R1, Kawasaki updated its ZX-10R, giving it more power, up and down quick shifter, and more sophisticated electronics. A new lighter crankshaft provides quicker revving with a correspondingly lighter balance shaft and rod journals that have new coating for reduced friction at higher RPM, helping in this regard. New pistons, cams with more overlap, and new airbox, 25% more volume, air filter with a 60% more surface area for the better flow, work with an all new cylinder head featuring reworked and polished intake and exhaust ports. Brakes and suspension were also upgraded using the Kawasaki World Superbike Championship experience. Nevertheless, the company managed to keep the price down, making it one of the most affordable superbikes on the market. And that was the history of Kawasaki motorcycles. If you liked today's video, make sure to smack that like button, give us thumbs up, and subscribe to Moto Network for more Moto content. Also, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Links in the description. Until then, see you next time.